What was the impact of the New Deal on women? The Great Depression was the Wall Street crash as a result of badly distributed income. It was an economic shrinkage of bankruptcies, factory closings, and rapidly worsening unemployment. As a response, the New Deal was created by Roosevelt and began the shift of power from the states to the federal government. To be clear, it didn't solve the Great Depression, but it definitely helped a lot, especially for women. During the Great Depression, an opinion regarding women began to form. Many believed that working women were part of the problem of the Great Depression because they took jobs that could have gone to unemployed male breadwinners. Of course, this began to change as the New Deal was put into place, but this was the unsaid sentiment of the time. The New Deal programs, many women were able to work as government employees. In fact, by 1939, 19% of all government employees were women. This was largely due to an event in 1933 where many leaders gathered at the White House with Eleanor Roosevelt and Harry Hopkins, the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. The focus of this meeting was to discuss work relief projects for women. Hopkins quoted, I am committed to a belief, a conviction on my part, that it is possible to put three to 400,000 women to work on good projects and do it very quickly. This meeting led to a great number of employment opportunities for jobless women over the next 10 years. Many New Deal programs helped women, but the one that provided the most job opportunities was the WPA, or the Works Progress Administration. In September 1938, they employed about 400,000. Women did a variety of jobs through the WPA, with the most common job being that they were responsible for the school lunch program. They made and served over 1.2 billion nutritious meals. They were also involved in many other jobs, including archaeology, scientific research, gardening, healthcare, teaching, libraries, recreation, sewing, and educational programs. The New Deal programs needed experienced relief workers, and most of the social workers were women. Since we have established that the New Deal programs opened up many opportunities for women, let's go through some important women in leadership positions. Of course, we have to start with none other than Eleanor Roosevelt. She was a figure as controversial as her husband, and she made a great many changes to America. Since Roosevelt himself was disabled, Eleanor acted as his eyes and ears as she traveled around America on extensive tours and reported on the conditions, programs, and public opinion. She was a great public speaker, and she advocated for the rights of child welfare, housing reform, and equal rights for women and racial minorities. Now we have Frances Perkins, the U.S. Secretary of Labor and the first woman to be appointed to a cabinet-level position. This was a big achievement considering the country's dire economic crisis. Throughout her time in office, Perkins created a long list of labor reforms. However, she did face much opposition from the press who wanted to invade personal details, as Perkins was known as the most boring political interviewee. Many people also created the public motto that Secretary of Labor is a man's job. Now, Molly Dusen. Molly Dusen was a high-ranking member of the Democratic Party during the time. She was quoted to be America's first female political boss. She was the vice chairman of the Social Security Board and head of the Women's Division of the Democratic Party. She was a major advocate for opening up government positions to women and always carried a list of potential women candidates in the case of a government position opening up. The appointment of over 100 women during the early New Deal years, ranging from three women who marked airstrips for the Aeronautics Board up to a Secretary of Labor, were because of Molly and Eleanor. She quoted, At last, women had their foot inside the door. We had the opportunity to demonstrate our ability to see what was needed and to get the job done while working harmoniously with men. The opportunities given women by Roosevelt in the 30s changed our status. Mary Bethune was the first black American woman to head a federal agency. She was the director of the National Youth Administration Division of Negro Affairs, as well as being one of the president's foremost African-American advisors. She assembled a black cabinet to advise on issues concerning African-Americans. 
She had been born to former slaves on cotton farms in South Carolina. So it was amazing how she became one of the most influential people of the time. Men took important posts or were given leadership roles in promoting national recovery, administrating relief programs, managing day-to-day -day operations of the government, and addressing the interests and needs of women. 22 women were given senior administrative positions, and Roosevelt treated them as he would any male colleague. He didn't shortchange their contributions and didn't spare them the competition of ideas that sometimes characterize top-level debates. All in all, women of the time were given a strong voice. Women faced many, many, many challenges during the Great Depression, even with the New Deal program. They were paid less and many new industry wage codes. In many cases, they were deemed ineligible for benefits like Social Security. Also, with Roosevelt's continuation of Section 213 in the Economy Act, married people could not be employed at the same time, so the majority of people who resigned or were fired in these cases were women. This was strongly protested against by Eleanor Roosevelt. So, the Civilian Conservation Corps paid urban men to do conservation work while living in government-established camps. They excluded women, but after insistent pressure from Eleanor Roosevelt, they opened up. However, women lucky enough to enroll in the camps received an allowance rather than a wage. Also, they could only stay one month and receive training in hygiene and housekeeping. More than 2.5 million men enrolled, but somehow they only had spots for 8,500 women. Administrator Hilda Smith noted, get the breaks, the girls are neglected. Although the New Deal opened up many opportunities for women to work in government positions, it also contributed to the mindset of the nuclear family. Thanks for watching!